Oh, we were rocking, man. We were out. We were out there rocking. I don't know if you heard the uh, the first third down for the for the Texans, man. But um, they couldn't even they couldn't even communicate out there. We only had twenty percent of the, the the stadium filled up, man. It was awesome. I think uh, we have the the confidence in every single person that's in that hole that they can make plays happen when their number is called. It, that was brutal. Yeah, I didn't do very good with that thing. But it, listen, it, it it'll be better the next time. So. Uh, I appreciate you asking that, though. It was a bit of a mess, but we'll get it fixed. Football is back, and last night's game looked a lot like a normal football game, depending upon what camera angles you saw. Chris, the images of the field itself during the games, it's football. Exactly. But it'd be the, it's the sideline shots where all of the masks you see, and... Andy Reid with his face shield that was badly in need of a windshield wipe. Oh my gosh, something <laughs> or someone to reach up under and put a smiley face on it. Something <laughs> you can't it's, do it that was again. Crying out, it was crying out for someone to just 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 the mouth yeah, they, and two dots. That's it. That's all it needed. Can they get a windshield wiper on that? They don't have one of those shields with like a mechanical windshield wiper on that. But I I, I felt for him. I mean, it was humid and rainy and whatever else, and he's sitting there trying to look at the game on the field and look at his play sheet and do all that. He couldn't see crap out there. So, yeah, he's going to have to reassess that plan. And I think uh, now, Travis Kelsey should reassess his plan for a coat. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like that. Coat yeah, I'm not, not quite sure what that was. <laughs> but, but you know what? I'll agree with Travis Kelsey. The game sounded like any other game. It did. And 16,000 fans in the stands can create – Noise that is similar, not nearly as deafening as a full stadium, but it, it did sound normal and it looked normal as long as the shots were only of the field. It looked like the second half of a preseason game whenever we would see the crowd, because that's the thing. I think some people thought, OK, there's 16,000. They're all going to be in the lower bowl. No. In order to properly distance, you've got 16,000 everywhere throughout the stadium. It just looks like a very sparse crowd. Yeah, no, it does. It's uh, it's an odd look. There's no doubt about that. The Chiefs fans, though, as we expected, uh, they made it sound like there was twice as many people in the stadium. But it, it, overall, you know, even though it was, you're right, with certain camera angles, the crowd noise, it all seemed normal. But it still wasn't. There was something missing a little bit, like... You know, it's still weird, to, like you said, see the crowd, see that. I felt like the players early on were, you know, trying to figure out their emotions in the moment, too. You know, of course, we had all the pregame stuff and all that, but I bet it was weird for them to run out on a stadium and be like, you know, whether you're used to getting booed or getting the crowd going, you're going, wait, this is weird. This is just not the same environment. And I felt early on that kind of showed where they were kind of getting used to the environment, used to another team, of course. And uh, it's just a different way of football for right now. But like we've seen in the NBA and everything else, I think they'll grow accustomed to it and we won't miss a beat. And the thing is, some games with fans in the stands, most games with none in the stands, so it's going to be a different adjustment. As you get used to, if you're the Texans and Chiefs, being in a stadium with 16,000, next game potentially zero, depending upon who plays where. But most of the games will be played without fans at all. And with that background noise that, your friend Kyle Shanahan calls a form of human torture of 70 to 75 decibels that never modulates, that never turns off, that never changes. It's always there. Always, always, always How there. is that? Why is that? I don't understand that. Like, we, we, can, we don't have anybody that can press a button or turn the volume down during a commercial break or at a dead moment of the game. That doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just, is it just as easy as that? We'll leave it there. Don't mess with it. And they don't want to do that. I don't, I don't get that one. I mean, to the extent that they are concerned about overall equity and fairness, the best thing to do is set it at the same level the entire time. I don't get it because the thing is they have noise of the crowd that is curated for the broadcast. Right. So, it's going to come through. The sound is going to come through, and it's been meticulously selected based upon circumstances of games played in that stadium. It's going to sound at home like a normal game in that stadium would sound, even though no one's going to be there. So I don't know why you even need the background noise. I don't know what the point of it is uh, other than, to, other than to, to keep it from being so quiet and so easy to hear everything that's said that I don't know, maybe you have some 
I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm grasping at yeah, straws no. here to come up with a reason why right. there's this compulsion to have what is, by all appearances, and based on everyone who's dealt with it, a very annoying and unnecessary element when you're trying to go about your business. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I mean, we'll, we'll see how that plays out too. Uh, I could see how you could be frustrated with that. It's going to change how you communicate on the sidelines and everything like that during dead moments. It's going to be hard to have those conversations where, hey, defensive staff, let's get together on the headsets here and have a little conversation. If, if it's the noises where it is, it sounds like that could uh, throw a wrench into things. But uh, hopefully this stuff can be changed a little bit as we go, too. I would hope that the NFL would, all right, this is annoying our teams. It doesn't make sense. It's not great for the broadcast and things like that. Let's have somebody there to turn the volume up or down or just to adjust to whatever makes the product the best. I, I hope the NFL is willing to do that. I've never gotten a good explanation on why they're going to do it. Now you've got me curious. Yeah. I'm going to make the request today. We'll see if they tell Get me Get on the why case I don't, there. Why are they doing Yeah, go do your job. Why are they doing it? I think that's a fair question. But when the game began, and I agree with you, it just, I think it was weird for everyone at first. Yeah, definitely. It was strange to see NFL football. It was strange to see something look so normal. Again, from the shots of the field itself during the gameplay, something so normal that that we don't expect any normalcy to to come through our TV especially when it comes to football so it was it was heartwarming it was familiar it was comforting uh, and it did take a little time to get things rolling although at the end of the day it, you know it, it, the chiefs last night looked a lot like the chiefs that you think they could be this year where they just dismantle everybody yes uh i feel like we watched a t a, at least a game last night where one team was on a, a different level than the other i mean in, in all capacities i really do mean that you know first off the talent on the football field i think that showed i mean the, the chiefs have so many playmakers on both sides of the ball then i think the next route i looked at that jumped out to me the array and variety of plays that you see Kansas City run uh, as compared to Houston, where there's just so many different ways and tricks and formations. And, oh, we found all this is window dressing to isolate Travis Kelsey one-on-one -on -one and he'll make a move and it's really the play's all about him and Kelsey, will, I mean, and Mahomes will hit him. Same thing on the defensive side of the ball. You know, Houston looked like they played just basic, conservative especially after the first series or two. And there's Steve Spagnuolo and Honey Badger and Frank Clark. I mean, they're moving around and changing defenses and doing all kinds of crazy coverages. So, you know, when I just look at it like that, I looked at a team last night that was, yeah, on another level, another playing field right now from the Houston Texans. And, yeah, I think the Chiefs can be special. We communicated about some of this during the game last night, yeah. but you got the sense, as did I, that the Texans, instead of deliberately slowing it down on offense only – deliberately slowing it down defensively, taking away the deep stuff right. and forcing the Chiefs to be methodical. The problem is sometimes when you force an offense to be methodical, it is, and <laughs> yeah. it gasses your defense. Exactly. You know, sometimes they're methodical too, and they methodically drive the ball down your throat on a 16-play drive for a touchdown or something like that. But, yeah, Mike, I mean, I think that's something that jumped out to me during the game. Houston seemed so scared of letting up that big play, doing something like that, that they were almost willing to die a slow death. And I think – Ever since Mexico City last year, the Chiefs playing the Chargers out there, that was the ch the changing point for me for the Kansas City offense. I think that's when they realized, wait, we got to come up with more plays and more ways. If teams want to play these deep zones and take away all these deep shots, then we got to find ways to just expose them underneath. And I feel like their variety of offense and everything they have grew from that point to where you saw last night. Now with Clyde Edwards-Alaire and – all the stuff Andy's figured out and drawn up in the sand and whatever else that you're going to have a hard time playing that approach against them too. You're going to, because they, they find out they they know how to be surgical now and go, okay, we'll go 12 plays, 80 yards, boom, 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 no big deal. And I think that might have to make some teams reassess how they uh, attack Kansas city as well. And that was a big part of the transition Patrick Mahomes had to make last year. And he told us before the season that that is where he needed to grow not looking for the kill shot, right. taking what's available. And see, that's the thing. Okay, fine. The defense did what it needed to do, keep everything in front of it, something Rodney Harrison advocates. Yeah. 
And then what 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 happened? What do you have to show for she it? She say fine. Right. She <laughs> say fine. We'll we'll do it. You're yeah. going to force us to keep everything in front of you. We will and you won't be able to stop us. And it's amazing to me to see the split between run and pass for an Andy Reid team right? when you've got 33 dropbacks and 34 rushing attempts. Woo! I got to have more rushing attempts than passing attempts if you include the one sack that Patrick Mahomes had. He had 33 dropbacks and 34 rushing attempts. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.